Launch director. Launch vehicle is ready to launch. We have Mission ignition. Director. You have permission Two. to launch. One and lift off. Lift off of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. Mark one executed, and we have an indication of spacecraft separation. Good afternoon, I'm Amanda Sterling, ULA's Kuiper Program Management Leader and your host for today's Project Kuiper Protoflight Launch. I'm joining you from ULA's Advanced Space Flight Operations Center at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. We're targeting a 2.06 p.m. Eastern liftoff. We have a two-hour launch window today. In addition to watching our webcast, you can also follow live mission progress at ULALaunch.com. In just a few moments, the count will enter a 21-minute planned hold. We have two planned holds in our seven-hour launch count, which give our team additional time to resolve any issues prior to entering the terminal count. At this time, the team is not working any issues and we're proceeding towards an on-time liftoff. Today's live coverage will continue through first stage separation. The launch window moved six minutes into the window due to a cola. Colas are brief moments in time when the launch is not allowed to occur because the trajectory would pass too close to another object already in space. This analysis is based on a screening of known active and debris objects in orbit that could cause a conjunction with the ascending Atlas V rocket. Before we continue, let's check on today's weather. Space Launch Delta 45 weather officer Melody Levin recently provided the forecast. Let's take a look at the numbers. The probability of violating launch constraints is 15%. Ground winds are 10 to 15 knots out of the north, and the temperature is 81 degrees Fahrenheit. The primary concerns for launch are the thick cloud layers rule and the cumulus cloud rule. So the weather is looking good for a launch attempt this afternoon. Our ULA team is excited for this mission as it marks the first in the partnership between ULA and Amazon. The protoflight mission includes KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2, which are prototype satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper a low-Earth orbit satellite network that will provide fast, affordable broadband to unserved and underserved communities around the world. These satellites include much of the technology and subsystems that power the production version of Amazon's satellite design, including phased array and parabolic antennas, power and propulsion systems, and custom design modems. This mission will add real-world data from space to results from Amazon's extensive lab testing, field work, and simulation, and help Amazon finalize design, deployment, and operational plans ahead of a full-scale deployment beginning in 2024. ULA's Atlas V-501 rocket will take the protoflight mission to orbit. This is the 99th Atlas V launch and ULA's 158th mission. Let's learn more about the rocket. Built in ULA's production facilities in Decatur, Alabama and Harlingen, Texas, the Atlas V rocket, once fully stacked, stands 196 feet and weighs about 750,000 pounds fully fueled. At the base is the Atlas V Common Core Booster, powered by an NPO Energomosh RD-180 engine. Atop the booster is ULA's Centaur second stage, powered by an Aerojet Rocketdyne RL-10A-42 engine. The spacecraft are encapsulated inside a protective five meter diameter payload fairing, produced by Beyond Gravity in Decatur, Alabama. With production complete, the rocket travels from Alabama to Cape Canaveral on ULA's rocket ship. Once in Florida, a series of events led to today's countdown. The process begins by lifting the 107-foot booster onto the Mobile Launch Platform, or MLP. Then, the Centaur's second stage is transported to the pad and lifted into position. Lastly, the encapsulated payload fairing is lifted and mated to the Atlas V rocket. Once fully assembled, 
The launch countdown begins by moving the rocket from the Vertical Integration Facility, or VIF, to the pad. To complete this move, which spans about one-third of a mile, the rocket is transported by the MLP. Weighing in at approximately two million pounds, the MLP supports the rocket and contains air conditioning, electrical, and commodities lines. Throughout the 20-minute trip, rail cars lead the move, with the payload van providing spacecraft communication and the ground van providing support for the rocket. At the rear of the convoy is an environmental control system, which provides air conditioning to the payload and the rocket. Trackmobiles power the nearly three million pound convoy. With the rocket on the pad, the launch team then transitions to fueling and other final preparations. After liftoff, ULA's Atlas V will head southeast from Space Launch Complex 41. Here's a look at today's ascent. Generating 860,000 pounds of thrust, the RD-180 engine ignites to lift the rocket away from the pad. Shortly after liftoff, Atlas begins a pitch over to attain the proper flight path while minimizing the dynamic pressure the rocket experiences during flight. Within the first minute and a half of flight, Atlas V reaches Mach 1, the speed of sound. The proto-flight spacecraft, KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2, are encapsulated inside a five-meter diameter payload fairing, which is a sandwich composite structure made with a vented aluminum honeycomb core and graphite epoxy face sheets. At approximately three and a half minutes, the mighty Atlas crosses the Kármán line and enters space. Once the rocket has climbed above Earth's atmosphere, the payload fairing is jettisoned. As Atlas approaches the end of first stage flight, the rocket has already reached a LEO altitude under the power of the first stage booster. With the majority of propellant expended, the main engine shuts down, followed by release of the booster stage. The rocket now weighs a little more than 7% of what it did at liftoff and is poised for the upper stage to take over and provide the rest of the impulse needed to reach orbit. KuiperSat-1 and KuiperSat-2 are prototype satellites for Amazon's Project Kuiper, a low Earth orbit satellite network that will provide fast, affordable broadband to unserved and underserved communities around the world. On today's Atlas V, along with the American flag, you can see logos representing Amazon and ULA. Today's Project Kuiper protoflight mission marks the first launch in ULA's partnership with Amazon and the beginning of an exciting new era for ULA and the entire U U.S. launch industry. The rocket also includes dedications to people who are no longer with us. Let's remember our ULA teammates. Bill Levinson's 38-year career began at Bell Helicopter Textron in 1983. In 1988, he joined General Dynamics, working on the Atlas program through its transitions to Lockheed Martin and ULA. Bill led the integration of the Atlas RD-180 main engine for the guidance, navigation, and control team. He subsequently served as the chief engineer for Atlas V human spaceflight development, Delta IV heavy upgrade activities, and chief engineer for Atlas V and Delta IV. In 2016, Bill returned to Lockheed Martin as the Director of Guidance, Navigation, and Control. Bill was a consummate professional, demonstrating technical excellence, leadership, and innovation in everything he did. The standards he set and people he influenced continue those traditions to this day. Jamel Shabazz was an integral part of the customer support team within ULA's government and commercial programs. From developing and maintaining internal team websites, to supporting ULA's mission managers, Jamel ensured pertinent information was in place and available for every launch campaign and mission readiness review. As a founding member of the Stride Honors Program, Jamel created and led the Mission Integration Leadership Forums. Jamel brought an abundance of enthusiasm to his work at ULA and took great pride in ULA's mission to save lives, explore the universe, and connect the world. 
Jim Wiltsey was a structural engineer for ULA's engineering and infrastructure team here at Cape Canaveral. His contributions were diverse and addressed a wide range of complex challenges, including his analysis of the vertical integration facility deck inserts. He will be remembered by colleagues as dedicated, hard thinking, and kind, always following through with every effort placed in his care. Over his career, Jim's contributions included many innovative solutions to difficult projects. Jim was an engineer's engineer, and he will be missed dearly. Today's launch is an exciting step for Amazon's Project Kuiper. Let's learn more. Connectivity is essential to daily life and 2.9 billion people have no connectivity at all. You know, at a global scale, if you look at countries, economies that are successful, connectivity is a big element of that. Any kid out in the world really should have access to high quality internet. Kuiper is our low Earth orbit satellite constellation. Its purpose is to serve underserved and unserved people with broadband around the world. Well, the true purpose of the mission is to address the digital divide. We want the antenna that people put on the roof be small, be easy to install, and it's extremely low cost so people across the globe are able to afford this kind of antenna. We can serve residential customers, we can serve enterprise customers. We can also connect IoT devices that are out in the field that are really hard to get to. There's the things that we know about, like tracking ships across the ocean or even delivering educational services. We're super excited about what are they going to come up with once they have broadband anywhere. ULA's partnership with Amazon includes investments in ULA's production and launch infrastructure to support a higher launch cadence that will benefit commercial and government customers operating out of the Cape. We're looking at footage taken during yesterday's Roll to Pad. Among other modifications, the investment includes developing a second vertical integration facility, or VIF. In the foreground, we see the current VIF, and in the background to the right, the second VIF is the building with the blue stripe. Modifications are underway in that facility. When complete, rockets will be processed for launch in both VIFs and transported to the pad via rail. In September, ULA launched Silent Barker NROL-107 on an Atlas V 551 rocket. Let's take a look at some highlights from that launch. Status check. Receive terminal cap. Propulsion. Go. Pneumatic. Go. LS2. Go. LH2. Go. S gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFSTS. Go. Flight control. Go. CCQ. Go. Off support. Go. Tom. Go. Umbilical. Go. ECS. Go. Redline monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Off safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Equal system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. Range coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch director. Launch vehicle is ready to launch. Mission director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. ALC, verify T0 is set for 1247 Zulu. Verified. We have ignition. Two, one. and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket. 
carrying Silent Barker NROL-107 for the National Reconnaissance Office and the United States Space Force. For those of you in Florida or southeast of our launch site, this visibility map shows when and where your best chances are to see the rocket as it lifts off and makes its way to orbit. All communications switch to channel one. All personnel and visitors remain in present position until launch. Maintain operational silence in the LCC. Terminal count briefing. If a condition exceeds a launch constraint any time after the terminal count status check, the observer shall now hold, hold, hold on channel one, identify their station, and briefly state the reason for the hold. Flight control, perform launch on time verification. Roger. Box 2, verify CISA perch flowing GN2 to the CISA. Verified. OSM, verify the FCO, ROC, and OSM hold power switches are in the proceed position. Ready to proceed. RLM, verify rather monitor event table are in the correct configuration for terminal count. Verified. RC, verify solar radiation acceptable for launch. Verified. Launch on time verified. Roger. LC switches ready position. All steps are complete prior to the status check. L minus eight minutes. We remain in the planned hold as we continue towards liftoff. In a few moments, launch conductor Scott Barney, marking his 50th launch as a ULA launch conductor, will pull the launch team for the final go to pick up the count. 29 engineers and managers are polled for system status and readiness to proceed. This is the final status check for all Atlas vehicle systems, ground systems, spacecraft, and the U.S. Space Force Eastern Range. The vehicle system readiness poll includes electrical systems, hydraulics, pneumatics, propulsion systems, flight control, and propellants. Let's listen in as Scott Barney performs the final polling. L minus seven minutes. Status check to proceed with terminal count. Atlas systems, propulsion. Go. Hydraulics. Go. Pneumatics. Go. Hello two. Go. Water. Go. Centaur systems, propulsion. Go. Pneumatics. Go. Hello two. Go. LH two. Go. Has gas. Go. Electrical systems, airborne. Go. Ground. Go. Facility. Go. RFFTS. Go. Flight control. Go. GC cube. Go. Ops port. Go. Com. Go. Umbilicals. Go. ECS. Go. Red line monitor. Go. Quality. Go. Ops safety manager. Go. ULA safety officer. Go. Vehicle system engineer. Go. Anomaly chief. Go. 
Range Coordinator. Clear to proceed. Launch Director. You have permission to launch. Proceeding with the count. ALC, verify T0 is set for 1806. Verified. All steps are complete prior to terminal count. Polling is complete and the launch team is go for launch. From T minus four minutes until liftoff, you'll hear Scott Barney and the launch team performing the final steps in the countdown procedure. Several critical activities occur in the final minutes before launch, including verifying fuel tank levels and pressures in the booster and Centaur, and arming the flight termination system. At T minus 25 seconds, you'll hear Go Atlas, Go Centaur, Go Kuiper. This is the final status check of rocket and payload readiness. At T minus 3 seconds, the main engine ignites. Then, after seeing Atlas V lift off the launch pad, you'll begin hearing flight commentator Rob Gannon providing launch vehicle ascent data. This is Atlas Mission Control at T minus four minutes and holding. We anticipate releasing the hold in just a few moments. Three, two, one, mark. 355. Ground pyros enabled. The countdown clock has resumed and we are go for launch at 2.06 p.m. Eastern. With liftoff approaching, we're going to raise the volume on our launch team so you can hear the final preps taking place. 3.30, Atlas Hydraulics at flight pressure. Three minutes. Pressurizing Atlas tanks. Securing LO2 topping. 250. FCS internal. One fifty nine. Vehicle internal. One fifty five. Launch sequence or start. One fifty. Securing Centaur LH two. Securing Centaur LO two. One forty. Launch enable. One thirty seven. FCS armed. T minus 90 seconds. The launch vehicle, payload, ground systems, and eastern range are go for launch. For those of you that just joined us, I'm Amanda Sterling, and I'm your host for today's live coverage of the Atlas V Project Kuiper Protoflight launch. 
The team is not working any issues at this time, and we're on track for liftoff at 2.06 p.m. Eastern. One minute. Rock, report range status. Range green. Forty seconds. Stable at step three. Twenty eight. Verify ECS. Reduce for launch. Verify. Status check. Go Atlas. Go Centaur. Go Kuiper. T minus Down. ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. We have ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket, carrying the proto flight mission for Amazon's Project Kuiper. In everything looks good. You're it's hearing the normal. voice of Rob Gannon providing launch vehicle Vehicles to send now data. Four miles altitude, point three miles downrange. Traveling at twelve hundred fifty miles per hour. Everything looking good. Mach one. Vehicles now supersonic. Max Q. That's it, the max and that pressure. Coming up on our first throttle segment. And the first throttle segment is engaged. Everything's good. What we're looking for is going to close the duck guides. Operating normal. Guidance is in. Everything looking good. Coming up our next throttle phase, we'll be limiting the vehicle acceleration to two and a half G's for payload bearing jets. Holding acceleration at two and a half G's, everything looking good. Inside of two minutes to be go. Everything's looking good. Engine operating as expected, smooth body rates. And vehicles pass through the uh, Carmen line. We have exited the Earth's atmosphere. Coming up on fairing jet, we've had fairing jettison and seal up our deck jettison. Everything looks good, nice and smooth. We are throttling up. 
inside of one minute to beat though. And we are less than a quarter of our liftoff weight at this time. And starting our 4G throttling, our G limiting phase of the mission. 30 seconds to beat though. And boost phase chill has been in progress. Engine temperatures are reducing as expected. Coming up on Beco, and we have cut off. Everything looks good. Now we have pre start on fuel and locks, we have good staging, ignition. And full thrust, your Alton is up and running normally. Seeing good steady state operating parameters. We've gone to fixed angles on the PU system. Seeing the expected response and operating parameters on the engine, making a lock control system. Temperatures are converging a bottle temp as expected. And we are now in the middle of a 10-minute, 12-second nominal burn of Centaur. We'll have a single burn to spacecraft separation. This is Atlas Mission Control at T plus 5 minutes, 45 seconds. We just heard flight commentator Rob Gannon confirm the successful completion of the early phase of today's flight. And all systems continue to operate nominally. At this time, we'll end our live coverage. For more information on the Atlas V, visit ULALaunch.com. I'm Amanda Sterling, and thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. For one last look at today's liftoff, let's cut over to a look at the liftoff of the Atlas V rocket carrying the proto-flight mission for Amazon's Project Kuiper. Minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, we have ignition and liftoff of the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket carrying the proto-flight mission for Amazon's Project Kuiper.